day, America. Such great news to report. Plus, Julie Banderas is hungover. <laughs> what a surprise, huh? Am I right? She poured herself into this chair. She looks terrible. <laughs> but that's okay. We'll give you a little break right now because we're going to have seven jokes. <laughs> Greg, seven jokes. So both American and Southwest Airlines say they'll comply with President Biden's order to force their employees to be vaccinated. Meanwhile, Spirit Airlines will begin requiring their employees to brush their teeth. <laughs> Is that too mean? I don't know. That's one. President of the Toy Association said this week that kids might not get what they want this Christmas due to the national shortages. Great, more money to spend on strippers, said Dana Perino. <laughs> Unbelievable pervert that she is. <laughs> John Gruden, you know him, the Raiders coach, will be removed from the Buccaneers ring of honor over emails that contained racist insults, which some say is hypocritical because O.J. Simpson remains in the NFL Hall of Fame, but that's an apples to oranges comparison since there's no proof Simpson sent mean emails. <laughs> right? He was acquitted. He was acquitted. The global supply chain crunch has made it hard to find Halloween costumes in stores. So this year, Chris Cuomo is going to pretend to be a journalist. <laughs> Where are we? Number four? Is that number four? This week, William Shatner became the oldest man to travel in space. Scientists suspect the 90-year-old took control of the rocket at some point because it never turned off its turn signal. <laughs> That's five. Footwear brand Minnetonka has apologized for making moccasins. They've made them for 75 years because it's not a Native American-owned business. To remedy this problem, the CEO says the company will be changing its name to Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> Number six. And finally, with Biden's war on energy independence, the price of coal has skyrocketed. So this Christmas, all the naughty kids will be getting their stockings filled with solar panels. <laughs> and that's your seven jokes. <laughs> ah. Delicious water, Julie. Oh, you might want to have some. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, did you know that the New York mayor, Bill de Blasio, otherwise known as a walking tree of turds, <laughs> is removing the statue of Thomas Jefferson from City Hall? In case you went to public schools, Jefferson was a founding father our third president, but also a slave owner. The statue has been there for nearly 200 years, a year for every screw-up de Blasio makes in a week. <laughs> but after all the problems going on in the city, it was clear that this putrid piece of marble had to go. I mean, think about it. A woman was beaten brutally on the city streets, stomped repeatedly, and left for dead. People are dodging bullets in Times Square like Neo in The Matrix. <laughs> But damn, that Thomas Jefferson, you know, he's behind all that. Of course, there was the Filipino nurse murdered Saturday afternoon in Times Square by a deranged criminal. That alleged killer had been released after groping another female. But clearly, if there was no Jefferson statue, this never would have happened. <laughs> There's a huge spike in homicides in major cities. It's getting so bad in places like Chicago, they are installing bleeding control kits in hundreds of city buildings. Each kit contains supplies like tourniquets, gauze, shears, gloves, and, and an instruction manual. I knew the labor shortage was severe, but now you have to fix your own gunshot wounds. <laughs> but what do you expect when you allow such statues to exist? Now, the removal of the statue was suggested by de Blasio's wife, Shirlane McRae. She said, I already share a bed with a blockhead. I don't need another one staring at me while I work. <laughs> but she also heads up the $800 million taxpayer-funded program called Thrive, which was designed to treat the mentally ill, like the guy who murdered the nurse. But where's the proof that the program actually did anything? The money disappeared faster than Brian Stelter at a donut factory. <laughs> if you take a casual drive around the city and you don't get carjacked first, you'll see countless destitute zombies. But it's hard to investigate the person in charge of helping them when it's the mayor's wife. So what do you do when you're supposed to treat the sick and deranged and you haven't done squat? And the people you're supposed to be helping are doing squat everywhere. Mm. On the sidewalks, in front of businesses, in the parks with dogs. And that's Julie. <laughs> so you go after the statues. And why? 
How does removing the statues make the poor or the elderly currently being picked off in New York any safer? It doesn't. If anything, when you're getting shot at, statues give you a place to hide behind. In fact, we could use a lot more statues of really fat people. <laughs> Grover Cleveland. Henry VIII. Hell, I'll take a Michael Moore. I'll take anything, because increasingly... Oh, it's a cheap shot. Increasingly, the public has fewer places to hide. But the real reason for removing statues is deflection. The activist class is a shallow, stupid breed with absurd priorities, and their leaders know that. All you need to do is dangle some performative act of symbolic justice in front of them, and like a hooker in front of Hunter, they'll climb all over it. <laughs> and then you don't need to do any real work at all. To fund the police, bail out thugs and rapists, and watch as your city time travels back to the 1970s, and then blame the statues. And a mayor and his wife can coast along by shifting the conversation to erasing the past and call that progress. It's not just New York, whether it's San Francisco, where they're closing down drugstores due to crime, or downtown Portland enduring another night of mob violence. All you need to do are a few things. Demand changing the problematic name of a grade school, cancel a holiday for a problematic explorer, remove a statue of a problematic founder, all in the name of equity and anti-racism as the elderly and working classes continue to get victimized by thugs and maniacs. It's a good grift. As long as you go woke, you're immune from criticism for the horrible messes that you leave behind. I wonder what the angry black male thinks. Joe Mackey, how many times have I told you not to wear my clothes? I thought you were real funny playing a little baby wearing my jacket. I'm tired of you guys wearing my clothes. You don't wear my clothes. Time to pay, Joe Mackey. Hey, who are you? Hey, Tyrus. I'm Tom Jefferson. Nice to meet you. Where's Joe? Oh, uh, Joe's not here today. I, I don't know. It's my first day. I don't know where Joe is. You'll do, Jefferson. Someone help me. I, I don't understand. We all understand. So remove a statue, change a holiday's name. Congrats, you've tackled the big problems. And when a parent loses a child or a child loses a parent to a maniac on a city street, you can tell them, hey, you know, I'm sorry for your loss, but remember that bust at Jefferson, it's gone as well. So let's call it even. Let's win. He's here to ruin your plans for the apocalypse. Author of the great new book, <laughs> San Francisco and Apocalypse Never, Michael Schellenberger. <laughs> she believes a chain is no stronger than its weakest drink. Fox News anchor, Julie Banderas. She gets wasted more than your tax dollars. Fox News contributor, Kat Tim. <laughs> And walking a mile in his shoes would only take one step. My massive sidekick and the NWA's world champion, television champion, Tyrus. <laughs> what? I'm just gonna... <laughs> what? It's gonna come to you first because, you know, Thomas Jefferson owned slaves. Yeah. You know, I figured I should come to you first. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, last time I saw Thomas Jefferson at the supermarket, it was awkward. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you, what is, you know, you see New York, it's going, it's hell in a handbasket, and that's an insult to hell. Mm. No, you know what, it, it always, it seems to me that the new excuse for not doing anything is to once again bring up slavery. Mm -hmm. So we had to get rid of Thomas Jefferson because he did what at the time was fashionable or was what happened. There was, I hate to even say this, but it's true, there was even black slave owners because that's what society was. The good news was that, or is, that we didn't do that and it didn't take us, we moved past it in record time. If you look at the other world, other places on this, on this world, how long they dealt with slavery, centuries for eons. We, we, got it, we got our stuff together relatively quick. So I think it's always hilarious that, why are you getting rid of Thomas Jefferson? Well, he owns slaves. Well, okay, so George Washington got to go. Pretty much everyone from that era has to go. Mm -hmm. But that is better to say you did that than help one 
sick, mental person right. get help in the street. But hey, Thomas Jefferson's gone. Mm -hmm. And here's the deal. The statue that you took away in most cases keeps somebody from getting rained on that you're not helping. Yeah, exactly. By the way, <laughs> to your point, the whole Democratic Party has to go because the Democratic Party, the name itself, is associated with slavery. They got to change their name to something else, Julie, <laughs> like severely hungover party, which is what you are. I you don't... don't smell like tequila, though. No, I don't. I chewed a lot of gum in the makeup chair. <laughs> <laughs> that poor makeup artist has passed out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, her but, uh... in my car. I can't believe on a... What's today? Wednesday? Thursday? Thursday? So that was a Wednesday night for you. Every night is a Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you make of this strategy to always, like, like as you see these, the crime go up in the city, this is almost serious questions, so you only have, like, 20 you seconds. You lost me already. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. As it's crime slow. gets worse, wokeism <laughs> seeks to replace the argument so you don't notice how everything's getting so bad. Does that make sense? Did I lose you again? Wait, I'm sorry, did you ask a question? <laughs> um, so first of all, I think it was a huge mistake to put your wife in charge of anything. Right. I mean, that's just something I think every husband should know. <laughs> ask Tyrus, he'll tell you. Have then you what seen? the hell? I'm just saying. Oh he wait, she in, doesn't watch. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. He lives in Barbie dream house. Yes. Like literally, that's where, and, and yeah. I'm just saying, your so, wife is Greg, in charge of So Greg, basically the moral is just keep deflecting. Yes. She, yes. Very democratic of you, thank you. You're welcome. You. Well, I mean, I'm talking about Mayor no, it is yeah. true. But it is true. And I have to say this. First of all, he needs to concentrate more on the war on crime instead of the war on history. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the Thomas Jefferson statue obviously represents a stain in American history, but it's also a reminder of where we've come. Mm -hmm. Man, this is deep for a hungover. Man, I, my head is spinning. <laughs> yeah. But we have come a long way. We have a long way to go. And to remove that is absolutely ridiculous. She should actually remove her husband. Like, banish him. Right. I yeah. mean, if you're going to give her control... <laughs> You know, make yeah. her make the best out of it. Yeah. Welcome to the show, Michael. This is your first time. I hope yeah. this isn't, hasn't disgusted you yet. <laughs> um, I, I, lo I look at the amount of time that is devoted to statues and other symbols, and I realize that is taken away. It, it, it's, it's not like an, it's, a, it's a pie of time that leaders have. So the more time you spend doing this stuff, you can't help citizens. It's a terrible, it's a terrible thing to do. That's what happened. I mean, in San Francisco, I describe how the school board spent much of last year trying to rename the schools mm -hmm. rather than trying to figure out how to get the kids back in the classroom. And so we've seen, yeah, African-American math proficiency in San Francisco high schools is 12%. Mm -hmm. And so they spend their time basically trying to make everybody feel guilty. It's all deflection, all distraction. It's a... It's a bad situation. So it's sad to see it arrive in New York, too. Yeah, it's, well, it's in every major city that is run by a Democrat, Cat. Mm. I blame you. No, don't. That is wrong. No. Because, maybe. no, and I will tell you why, Greg. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's bad on the streets of New York. It's very, very bad. And, you know, people, you walk down the street and you see it, people will yell at you. And I am saying it's bad, and that says something, because first of all, I normally enjoy attention of any kind. Yes. <laughs> and second of all, I have dated at least one homeless man. Yes, that's true. Right? Possibly two. Possibly two. The other one, we weren't sure about no proof of the apartment, right? So what I'm saying is, you count I have done more right. for the homeless <laughs> than all of Thrive NYC. <laughs> Give her the 800 million. Believe me, believe me, I have done more. <laughs> and I will make sure my husband does not watch this show. <laughs> does living in a car count as No, and I did it for free, too. <laughs> That's a great question, Greg. Is living in a car mean you're homeless or an explorer? They also didn't have cars. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.